Welcome. This is my regular brief summary of upcoming interesting astronomical events. Well, let's see what's on the menu for August 2014. We have a rendezvous with a comet. There are conjunctions and occultations coming up. Of course, there's going to be various phases of the moon. We have a meteor shower and we'll do our regular asteroid watch feature and also look at what the sun is likely to be doing for the coming month. Let's deal with these in chronological order. There are thousands, if not tens of thousands, of asteroids that cross the Earth's orbit. But during August, none of them are going to come very close to the Earth. In fact, none of them come within one lunar distance, which is about 363,000 kilometers away. So we're safe for at least one more month. On the 2nd of August, Mercury and Jupiter are going to be in conjunction. That means that they are at their closest approach to each other in the sky. You can see in this short video Jupiter moving off to the west of the Sun, ready to encounter Mercury. Mercury will shortly appear from the west side of the field of view and start moving east through it. And on the second, the two planets will be at their closest approach. It may seem a little odd that Mercury and Jupiter appear to be orbiting in opposite directions. All the planets orbit the Sun in an anti-clockwise direction. So what is causing this apparent retrograde motion of one or both planets? It's all to do with the relative motions of Jupiter, Mercury and the Earth. As Mercury is closer to the Sun than the Earth, it moves around its orbit faster than the Earth does. Having passed its maximum western elongation, it is now moving from west to east, i.e. from right to left, from our perspective. Jupiter, on the other hand, moves more slowly than the Earth. So even though it is moving in the same direction as Mercury, Earth is effectively overtaking it and so it will appear to move in the opposite direction, at least for a while. On the 4th of August, the Moon will occult Saturn at around about 10.30 UT. This will best be seen in the Southern Hemisphere from Australia. Possibly the most exciting event for this August will be the rendezvous with a comet that the ESA mission Rosetta is going to achieve. The comet that it is visiting is churyumov gerasimenko the spacecraft, which was launched in 2004, comprises of two parts, an orbiter and a lander. Philae, which is the lander, will touch down on the comet in November of this year. The comet appears to be made of two parts tenuously fused together. This is a particularly exciting mission for me because one of the instruments on board, Rosina, was partly built at the lab that I used to run. Rosetta will measure the composition of the comet and the particles and fields that surround it. It should put an end to the debate that uh, claims that comets are not primarily made of ice and dust. And it will be very interesting to see how the Electric Universe people explain the fact there isn't a major electric or magnetic field around these objects. On August 10th we're going to have a supermoon. That means that it's either a full or new moon occurs when the moon is at its closest approach to Earth. In this case it's a full moon. Uh, and because of the closeness of the Moon and its alignment with the Sun, we can expect very high tides, which are called astronomical high tides. On the 12th and 13th of August, we have the Perseid meteor shower. This is usually a very reliable meteor shower with up to 60 meteors per hour. And there's always a chance of a fireball during this particular meteor storm. The meteor shower originates from the debris from the comet Swift Tuttle. However, there's a fly in this particular ointment from the point of view that we're very close to a full moon, so the fainter meteors will probably be hidden by the brightness of the moon. On the morning of August 18th, Venus and Jupiter will be in conjunction. This is one of the closest conjunctions of any planets for 2014. This is very much the same sort of story as I just told you about Mercury and Jupiter. However, they will have moved far enough away from the Sun that they'll be visible to the naked eye, unlike the previous conjunction and it will occur very close to M44, the Beehive Cluster, which is a very beautiful open cluster. The 25th of August will be New Moon, which is a good time to break out your telescopes and look for beautiful objects in the sky as they will be at their darkest. On the 29th of August, Neptune will be in opposition. This will be the best time to see it as it will be relatively bright, magnitude 7.8, which means you should be able to see it in good binoculars. It will be in the constellation of Aquarius. On the 31st of August, we have a second occultation of Saturn by the Moon, this time at about 1900 UT, 
and it will be visible from the eastern United States to Western Africa. Last, but by no means least, is what's going to happen to the Sun in August. In the last few days, solar activity has been picking up and the sunspot number has gone to well over 100 again. And we've just had a near M flare from uh, a region uh, in the southeast. I expect for at least for the first week of August that this activity level will remain relatively high until these sunspots rotate off the disk. Then there should be a couple of weeks of relatively low activity and then we'll pick up again as they return. The main question here is when will the next activity burst occur? Now if you recall my uh, forecast for this was sometime in August plus or minus one or two solar rotations. This hasn't happened as yet but I've still got a little bit of time for the forecast to come true. What happens in the next few months will have profound implications to the solar cycle. If indeed there's another large activity burst, then the maximum of this particular cycle could well move to the middle of this year or into uh, next year. If, uh, as I suspected, this burst will be very weak or much smaller than the previous one, then it is likely that January of 2014 was solar maximum, which is precisely when a colleague and I predicted it would be back in 2009. Bye for now. Happy stargazing in August. Mm -hmm.